Hi, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 7.1, find part of a group. The essential question for this lesson is, how can you find a fractional part of a group? Now, go ahead and open up in your GoMath workbook to lesson 7.1, found on page 145, and let's get started. Now, let's take a look at question number two. Question two says, use a model to solve. Well, for number two, they give us the fraction 7 eighths, and we're going to multiply that by the whole number, 16. Well, in order to use a model to solve this problem, here's what we need to do. First of all, we have to identify the denominator in our given fraction. Well, I know that in our fraction 7 eighths, the denominator is an 8. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to divide the whole number, which is 16, into 8 equal groups. Well, here's what I know. And I'm just going to write this out to the side. I know that 16 divided by 8 is 2. So what that tells me is, I'm going to have 8 equal groups, and there's going to be 2 in each group. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that picture. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to draw an array or a picture. So I have 1, 2 in each group. Here's 1 group, 2 groups, 3 groups, 4 groups, 5 groups, 6 groups, 7 groups, and now I have eight groups and once again this is showing eight groups and there's two in each group so one two three four five six seven eight groups with two in each group now that I have my array drawn here's our next step we now need to identify the numerator in our given fraction when well, this fraction our numerator is a seven so what I'm going to do next is this I'm now going to circle seven of those eight equal groups so here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're circling seven of those eight equal groups of two. Now our next step is to count the number of circled x's. Well, here's what we know. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen circled x's. So what that tells us is seven eighths times sixteen is going to equal the whole number. 14. So 14 becomes our answer. Now let's take a look at question number four. Once again question four says to use a model to solve and for number four they give us the fraction two-thirds times the whole number nine. Well, Once again if I'm going to use a model to solve here's what I need to know. I need to know the denominator in the given fraction. When my given fraction my denominator is a three. So what that tells me is, I've got to divide our whole number, which is a 9, into 3 equal groups. Well, what I know is this, and I'm going to write this down out to the side once again. I know that when I divide 9 by 3, it's going to give me 3. So what that tells me is, I'm going to have 3 equal groups of 3. Now, I'm going to go ahead and draw our picture, or the array, that's going to show 3 equal groups of 3. So we're going to go ahead and draw that. So we have three equal groups of three. So here's one group with three in it. Here's a second group with three in it. And here's a third group with three in it. So that once again shows three equal groups with three in each group. Now our next step is to identify the numerator in this fraction. And in the fraction two thirds, our numerator is a two. So what that tells me is I need to circle two of the three equal groups of three. So I'm going to go ahead and I have one group here, here's two, so I'm circling two of those equal groups. Now my next step is to count the circled x's. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six of my x's that are circled. So what that tells me is two-thirds times the whole number nine is going to equal six. So I'm going to go ahead and write down six and that becomes the product of my multiplication problem. Now let's take a look at question number six. Once again we're going to use a model to solve. Well for question six they give us four-fifths times the whole number ten. Once again my first step is to identify the denominator in the given fraction. Well in the fraction four-fifths my denominator is a five. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide the whole number ten into five equal groups. Well out to the side I'm going to go ahead and write it down because here's what I know. I know that when I divide 10 by 5 that's going to give me 2. So what that tells me is I'm going to have 5 equal groups 
with two in each group. So my next step is to go ahead and draw the array or the picture that shows the five equal groups with two in each group. So I'm going to go ahead and begin to draw and here is my first group that has two in it. So there's group one, here's group two, group three, group four, and group five. So once again I now have my five equal groups with two in each group. Now my next step is to identify the numerator in my fraction. And in the fraction 4 fifths, the numerator is a 4. So what that tells me is, I now need to circle 4 of the 5 equal groups of 2. So I'm going to go ahead and begin to circle. Here's one group, two groups, three, four groups that I'm going to go ahead and circle. So once again, we now have circled 4 of the 5 equal groups of 2. Now our next step is to count how many of those circled x's we have. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 x's that are circled. And what that tells me is this. That tells me that 4 fifths times the whole number 10 is going to equal 8. So we're going to go ahead and write the 8 down and 8 becomes the product of our problem. Now let's take a look at question number seven. It's one of our real world problem solving questions and it says, Marco drew 20 pictures. He drew three fourths of them in art class. How many pictures did Marco draw in art class? Well, what we know is this. We know that Marco drew 20 pictures and we know that he drew three fourths of them in art class. It says, how many pictures did Marco draw in art class? So my problem becomes three-fourths of the 20 pictures. Now I want to point out to you something. The word of also represents multiplication. So when you see that word of, it just means that we need to multiply. Now once again, we're going to use a model to solve this multiplication problem. My first step is to identify the denominator in the given fraction. And in the fraction three-fourths, our denominator is a four. So that means I have to divide our whole number 20 into four equal groups. Well, what I know is this, and we'll just write it out to the side. I know that 20 divided by 4 is going to equal 5. So what I need is I need four equal groups with 5 in each group. So I'm going to go ahead and begin to draw. So we have, here's one group, and there should be 5 in each group. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's our first group of 5. And then we have our second group. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now we have our third group here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we have our fourth group. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So once again, that shows four equal groups with 5 in each group. Now our next step is to identify the numerator in our fraction. Well, our numerator is 3. So what that tells me is I need now to circle three of those four equal groups with five in each group. So I'm going to go ahead and begin to circle. Here's one group, two groups, three groups right here that are being circled. So once again, that shows we've got four groups with five in each group, and we've now circled three of those groups because our numerator is a three. Now our next step is to count how many of those x's have been circled. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So what I know is, I know that 3 fourths of 20, or 3 fourths times 20, is going to equal the whole number 15. So I'm going to go ahead and write the 15 out here. So we know that Marco drew 15 pictures in art class. Now, let's take a look at question number eight. It says, Caroline has 10 marbles. One half of them are blue. How many of Caroline's marbles are blue? So what we know is this. We know that Caroline has 10 marbles, and we know that one half of them are blue. The question is, how many marbles are blue? So our problem becomes, we've got to find one half of the number 10. Now remember, once again, that word of simply means to multiply. So we're going to find one half times ten. Now once again, we're going to use our model to do that. And our first step is to identify the denominator in our fraction, which is a two. So what we're going to do is we're now going to make, or we're going to divide our whole number ten into two equal groups. 
Well, what I know is when I divide 10 by 2, that's going to equal 5. So I need two equal groups that have 5 in each group. So I'm going to go ahead and begin to draw my picture or my array to show that. So here's one group. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's our one group. Now here's our second group of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we now have two equal groups with 5 in each group. Now our next step is to use the numerator, which in this case is a 1, and that tells us how many of our equal groups to circle. So I'm going to circle one of those equal groups. Now our next step is to count how many x's we've circled. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 x's circled. So what that tells me is 1 half of 10 is going to equal 5. And I'm going to go ahead and write the 5 down as my answer. So I know that Caroline had 5 blue marbles. Now, as your homework for tonight, I want you guys to complete question number one and question number two, as well as numbers three through six found in your Go Math workbook on page 146. Don't forget, somewhere on your homework page, I want you to assess yourself. Do you feel like you're number one a novice, number two an apprentice, number three a practitioner, or number four an expert? Once again, your homework assignment for tonight will be to complete question number one and number two, as well as numbers three through six found on page 146 in your GoMath workbook. We hope you have a great evening and we look forward to seeing you in school tomorrow.